so that will effectively take this section of the graph and flip it upwards like so okay so we don't have any negative values of f of x for the modulus of f of x so in this video we're going to be looking at the modulus function also known as uh, the absolute value so the modulus function basically takes any number and changes the sign of that number if and only if the number is negative so the modulus function does not affect uh, positive values so for example if we apply the modulus function to the number positive 7 then the result is positive 7 however if we apply the modulus function to negative 7, then we get 7. So sign changed because we have the negative input. So let's look at some official definitions here. So for values of x, for values of x greater than or equal to 0, then the modulus of x is simply equal to x, or the absolute value of x is simply equal to x. And for values of x less than zero, that is values of x that are negative, then the modulus of x is equal to the negative of that value. So in other words, the, the value uh, will change sign. Um, so x is less than zero, negative values of x become positive. So for values of f of x, so we, we can apply this modulus function not only to variables, but, but to functions of variables as well. And we'll be looking at what these will look like when we uh, draw them as graphs on some Cartesian uh, coordinate system. So just as with the, uh, the variable x for functions of x or for values of f of x greater than or equal to zero the modulus of f of x is simply equal to f of x and for values of f of x less than zero or negative values of f of x then the modulus of f of x becomes minus f of x so the the sign will change so if the value of f of x is a negative number, it will then become positive. And if we look at that on a graph, that just means that the negative part of the function, that is the part of the function under the x-axis, will be reflected in the x-axis. And we'll have a look at some examples to see what that looks like. So there are three main cases we can have with regards to values of f of x. So here, all values of the modulus function applied to f of x are positive. So the graph remains the same for values above the x-axis. And for values below the x-axis, f of x will be reflected in the x-axis. So negative values of f of x will be reflected in the x-axis. So they are all positive. So you won't get any values under the x-axis when the modulus function is applied to f of x. So let's have a look at what that looks like uh, as a graph visually. So here on the left we have an example of, uh, of f of x or what f of x might look like, so some quadratic function. Um, so how does this change if we apply this modulus function to it? Well, as we said before, it will flip the negative portion of the graph and reflect it in the x-axis. So that will effectively take this section of the graph and flip it upwards like so. Okay, so we don't have any negative values of f of x for the modulus of f of x. So that's what will happen here. Um, and the second case we have is where the modulus function is applied to the input variables of the function. So just x 
input rather than the output. So here, all values of f of x for negative x values will be the same as values for f of x for positive x values, because all of the negative inputs will be changed to positive inputs and therefore will be exactly the same as the output for the positive values of x. So in other words, f of x on the left of the y-axis will be a reflection of f of x on the right of the y-axis. So let's have a look at that. So again, we have the same example on the left of y equals f of x. So we apply this modulus function to all the inputs variables of the function. So this has the same effect as flipping it horizontally or reflecting it in the y-axis. So we have the same values on the right as we do for the left. So it just flips like this. Okay. So all those negative values of x become positive and therefore they are identical as the values on the right. Okay. Now this final example we have is where y is equal to the modulus of the function where the input variables are negative. Okay, so we have two effects that are taking place on this function. So here we have a combination of two reflections. The first will be a reflection in the y-axis because we're swapping positive and negative x values. Okay, so this time not only are negative values of x becoming positive, but also positive values of x are becoming negative. So this has a swapping effect rather than simply uh, the right side of the graph being copied onto the left, we have a swap. And the second will be the same effect as the first example, that is f of x below the x-axis will be reflected in the x-axis, thus eliminating any negative values of f of x. So let's take a look at a quick example. As before, we have our f of x, and now we have two, um, two effects on the graph here. The first one is when we apply the negative x values, thus changing negative x values to positive and positive x values to negative. So just like we're flipping it, so we're just flipping it around. Okay, let's have a look at that again. Okay, and the second is just as the first example, we're now applying the modulus, so this negative section of the graph under the x-axis is now going to become positive, like so, and that's how it changes. Okay, so reflection in the y-axis, and then a reflection just for the negative part in the x-axis. So now we're going to look at the three main steps that you want to follow when solving equations with modulus functions or absolute values. Um, so the first step here is to draw the graphs of the left hand side and the right hand side of the equation. Now the reason this is necessary or at least strongly advised is that it really helps to visualize the equations so that we know how the modulus function is affecting the equation and how to solve it. If we can see the solutions visually then we know what we're looking for when we're writing it with just the mathematical notation. So step two is finding the range of x values where f of x is greater than zero or positive and where f of x is negative. Why? Well because we need to know which part of the function is changing. Parts of the function above zero or positive parts of the function are not going to change because we know that the modulus does not affect positive values. However, where f of x is less than zero, we know that this graph is going to change and therefore we will have to solve a different equation entirely to, uh, to find the solutions of an equation with the modulus function applied. So looking now at the uh, the third and final step, uh, we have to write two new equations based on where the, uh, the values of f of x become positive and where they become negative. 
and then solve both of these equations for x. So let's take a look at an example. Uh, no better way to uh, to get your head around this than looking at, at some uh, some real life example. So solve x squared minus nine equals seven, or solve the the modulus of x squared minus nine equals seven. Now let's see what that looks like if we draw it as a graph. So as per the first step, draw the graphs of the left hand side and the right hand side of the equation. So let's concentrate on the left hand side. So we have the modulus of x squared minus nine. So let's just think about what that will look like without the modulus function applied first. So what will x squared minus nine look like? Well, first of all, we know that it will be a U shape because of the positive X squared term. Secondly, we know that when X is equal to zero, Y is equal to minus nine. The cross is at minus nine. And if we solve the equation, X squared minus nine is zero, then we get two solutions, minus three and plus three. So this is what our x squared minus nine will look like. And then we look at the right hand side of the equation. So we have y equals seven. So what will y equals seven look like? Well, this is just simply a constant. Uh, so a straight line that will run straight through y equals seven and it will be horizontal. So the solutions to this equation will simply be the intersections of both of these graphs. Now, these are the solutions of x squared minus 9 equals 7. But we want the solutions of the modulus of x squared minus 9 equals 7. So we have to change this graph so we have the modulus. So as we had before in the example, applying the modulus function will reflect the negative portion of the graph in the x axis. So we will get something that looks like this. So the graph will now be crossing the y axis at plus nine. Um, so this is important because now we have two extra solutions here. We have two extra intersections between y equals seven and this new graph here. So looking at the second step now, we've drawn the graph. We can see that we're looking for four solutions. Now we have to find the range of x values where the original f of x was greater than zero and where f of x was less than zero. Well, we can see that it was greater than zero just outside of positive three and just below negative three. Okay, it was already positive here and it was negative between minus three and three because that's where we flipped it when we applied the modulus function. Okay, so this is important because we are going to write two different equations. So the first equation will just be the same as what we have here with no changes. But here we've actually got a new equation here because we flipped it and that changes it. So let's see how that changes the equation. So first, the part of the function greater than zero is for values less than negative three and greater than three. OK, so in other words, outside of this range here and the function or the values of f of x that are less than zero are between minus three and three. And that's where we flipped it after applying the modulus function. So now we are ready to write two equations to find all four solutions. Okay, so first write two new equations and solve both for x. So the first equation we're going to have is going to be applicable to the range of x values outside of this inner range here. So the part of the function that doesn't change after applying the modulus function. So 
If this part of the function doesn't change, then we can simply write the function as it is without the modulus function, because it's the positive part of the function that doesn't change after having the, the, uh, the modulus function applied to it. So we can write x squared minus 9 equals 7, and this is only for x values less than minus 3 and x values more than minus 3, sorry, more than 3. Uh, and the second equation will be for x values within this range. So the question is, after we applied the modulus function, what did this inner part of the graph change to? It changed from x squared minus 9, so x squared minus 9 was when it was down here, and then we flipped it, we reflected it in the x-axis. So what effect does that have? Well, that's basically the negative of f of x. We're just swapping the signs, so it's like applying a negative sign to f of x. So if we apply a negative sign to what's inside this modulus function here, we simply get minus x squared plus 9, okay? So for that inner part of the function, we're just applying a negative sign because we have flipped it in the, uh, in the x-axis. So minus x squared plus 9 is equal to 7 for x values between minus 3 and plus 3. So now we have our two equations and we can just go ahead and solve those for x. So looking at the first one, we will have x squared is equal to 16 after adding 9 to both sides, giving us solutions of 4 and minus 4. And for the second equation, we can subtract 9 from both sides to give us minus x squared equals minus 2. Multiplying that equation by minus 1 gives x squared equals 2, square rooting both sides. So we have another two solutions, which are square root of 2 and the negative of the square root of 2. And there you have it. That's that's it. Um, so it's basically breaking down the problem into those three main steps, drawing the graphs of the left hand side of the equation and the right hand side of the equation, and then applying the modulus function and seeing which part of the graph is affected by the modulus function, because the other part of the graph just stays as it is as if the modulus function had not been applied and the part of the graph that does change that does get flipped into the top half of the graph we apply a negative sign to this because we that's effectively what we're doing we're making it negative and that's what gives us the two separate equations here one equation for the part of the graph that was left untouched and one equation for the part of the graph that was flipped in the x-axis and then we go ahead and solve for both of those and this will normally for quadratic functions give you another two solutions so you'll get four solutions as opposed to two um, you can also have an example where you have simply a linear equation um, and this normally doesn't increase the number of solutions normally you just get a flip you apply exactly the same concepts so flip it in the x-axis but you just get a different solution, um, but normally it's the same number. Okay, so uh, thanks for listening. I hope this, uh, this was of use to you. Uh, if it was, if you got some value from it, uh, I would very much appreciate if you could uh, like the video and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss um, more uh, clear explanations of various concepts in maths. Feel free to leave a comment underneath any questions or requests for any future videos you'd like to see and I'd be happy to uh, to to do that for you okay thanks for listening and see you again bye bye